Okay, Spiritual Chuck here. It's 11.42. I started this video on 11.11.22. 11, At 11.42. Hmm. Could have, if I'd have started it 20 minutes ago, it would have been ironic. Anyway, I'm going to try and articulate this conversation. I've thought about it. And uh, there's a lot of uh, ingredients to it. So I'm going to try and piece it together for you guys. I may pause it a couple times. You won't even notice that. But if I'm talking too slow at some point, you can speed it up to 1.25. But this is a really interesting conversation. And uh, there's a number of reasons and paths that I'm going to go down in describing what it is that... Uh, I'm trying to say. So you just kind of have to bear with me on this, okay? Uh, yesterday, or today, I listened to Dan Winter's most recent video. And man, he's just a brilliant, brilliant guy. And he's talking about so many things, but I, I want to hone in on some things that he's talking about. And one of them was... Uh, it's like recursive implosion. In other words, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but he's talking about envisioning yourself turning inside out and that that's part of the process of this toroidal plasma exodus that he's describing. So literally like looking at your hand and imagining yourself uh, like in a dream, turning yourself inside out. And that that's part of the implosion uh, necessary to make your exodus. Now, I'm not going to try and articulate how Dan describes this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasize the fact that, that he said that and that I have had a similar experience like that. And I was thinking about his video and then I was remembering having had an experience on my motorcycle trip uh, from Texas to Washington State, uh, 90 days road camping on a KLR 650 with everything I owned on it, of course. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, what happened to me was I got a hold of, uh, I was on Mount Shasta, okay, and Dan is talking about finding a place of power, a place of uh, a portal to make your exodus. And so there's various ley lines, uh, energy grid ley lines, uh, times of the day would be sunset or sunrise um, at, the, at the very moment of sunset, sunrise, uh, sacred temples, cathedrals, things like that. And these are uh, what would be potential exodus points, okay? And, of course, I think Mount Shasta would probably be one of those uh, energy uh, vortex locations. And so it just so happens that I found, I was camping, I was on Lake, uh, on uh, Mount Shasta, and I happened to find two Amanita muscaria mushrooms that were about almost fully dried, but they were still in the ground, you know, about half dried. And uh, uh, John Allegro is the one that wrote the book called The Mushroom and the Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. And he was one of five guys asked to interpret the Dead Sea Scrolls by the Vatican. And, um, uh, interesting thing that happened was that John came out, John Allegro came out with this book and he said uh, unequivocally that Jesus Christ was an Amanita muscaria mushroom. And it freaked the Vatican out so bad that they confiscated the book and uh, didn't let the copyright out for quite a while until Apparently, his daughter got a hold of it 
and got the copyrights to the book. Of course, after I read that book, I had to try the Amanita muscaria because I've got this uh, cancer rising, uh, Christ conscious uh, energy thing going on. Okay. Three planets in Libra, but cancer rising and three planets in Scorpio. So, and then some other various things going on. Christ said, don't. The soothsayers and the astrologers wouldn't save you, but he didn't say they were wrong. They don't. They do, in fact, identify your soul path, color of your spots, and things like that. Ironically, I mean, amazingly, there's some synchronicities that go on in this life that really are incredible, and uh, you know, attributed to the, you know, I attribute them to the Pleroma and the, the. the consciousness of the of this this uh, multiplicity this universe you know uni not not monoverse but universe and all its energies could describe as the mother versus the father who is the 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 monoverse or the one the undifferentiated, uh, uh, immeasurable, uh, inconceivable, uh, pure consciousness, source, light, whatever you want to describe, however you want to describe it, versus, or formless versus the mother's form and multiplicity and uh, of galaxies in the universe the pleroma, the Akashic records, the form begets form, you know. I'm in love with form. I'm, I'm on this trip, on this journey, I've, I've dumpster dived. I've, I've been more decadent uh, in this journey than I have in all my life. Uh, getting into everything, you know, I mean, that from the donuts to the coffee to the cigarettes to the all of it you know and it's just like unbelievable that I'm having this form experience uh, and I'm so rich in it, it it's uh, I'm, I've blown my diet I've blown my 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 purity in terms of my body's consumption I mean, I've just blown everything, and I'm about as dirty as, you know, I was before I started, or w whenever, you know, and I'm like, so how am I going to get back to the Father? How am I going to get back to this purity? How am I going to purify my body, my mind, and my spirit, you know? So here's how I'm going to do it, the same way I did it in the storage unit was I just went to sleep and I woke up and I took a drink of water and I took a pee and I sat there until, I, you know, the form started becoming overwhelming again and the thoughts and the desires to get up and move uh, and I'd lay back down and I continued to do this in a dark room meditation environment, okay? And the reason I mention it's all part of this conversation. So this conversation is not all over the place, if you just bear with me. So this is a vital, uh, necessary part of our toroidal plasma exodus is the darkroom meditation experience. Because what it did for me and will do for me again, and you also, is it provided that stillness, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that changed my frequency, that allowed me to prepare uh, for this, uh, for an exodus. And the reason that I know that, or, or I, I feel it really strongly, intuitively, is that let me finish my story about the Amanita muscarias on Mount Shasta. I took them and put them on a big black rock and let them dry in the sun. And they were completely dried. 
and I got in the tent prepared to to go on my my trip on Amanitas and I knew by then because I'd already done it before that I needed to be prepared so as soon as I ate them that I would be in my sleeping bag uh, in my tent and uh, be ready to go through you know six hours of reoccurring uh, experiences uh, essentially out of my mind and uh so I was all ready, and I ate the mushrooms, and I got in the tent. I was, uh, I was um, zipping up my my sleeping bag, and the trip question or the idea behind the trip was, uh, I wanted to experience an alternate reality, you know, an alternate dimension. And so as I was thinking about this, I was zipping up my, my sleeping bag, I started tripping. And so what I did wound up tripping on for six hours or however long it was, was that I continued to try and zipper my way into an alternate reality. And in the end, um, somebody was zippering their way into my reality and zippering me into uh, essentially non-existence and that scared me so bad it that's when I woke up and so let's go back to Dan Winter for a minute and talk about him talking about turning inside out and that in fact at the end of that trip with Amanita's that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like someone was turning me inside out and that I was being zippered into oblivion. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, wow. And so, it, and it was so terrifying that, or it was, it was so scary that it was like, that's what seemed to have knocked me out of the, out of the trip. So what I'm what I'm thinking is is that that's where I need this peace that surpasses all understanding and this courage that comes from the dark room meditation experience. It's a oneness experience. It's um and it's so strong that it's like you know it, I'm I'm telling you after the storage unit I was fearless. And uh, Gaudapada talks about Asparsha Yoga and having had that experience, all you can do is stay close to it and allow circumstances to provide for you. And again, staying close to it would be staying close to that darkroom meditation practice, you know, of, of nothingness, of, of, of going to sleep, of staying close to deep sleep while awake, which is the classic fourth state of consciousness that uh, is is the classic definition of enlightenment the fourth state of consciousness everything's in fours so uh, or twos you know like they, they recommend that you eat two amanitas together and I think it's like male and female you know it's like I'm listening to this one of these crazy terror reports and uh, Ashley was talking about uh, a male and a female, and that the that the female was was uh, you know out to get me, and that the male was there to save me. And I was like, oh man, that sounds like my uh, the mother and the father, and and the 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 relationship uh, of of the formless and the form. You understand what I'm saying? So when, when Dan's talking about the toroidal plasma exodus, he's talking about a vertical antenna-like uh, transmission through the center of a vortexual plasma uh, uh, vortex, and plasma being consciousness or universal consciousness, 
uh, and the, the, the antenna, the, the, so the vertical would be the father and the, the horizontal would be the mother, the horizontal action of the spinning. And so let's get back to the Amanita again for a minute and realize that the Amanita muscaria mushroom will loop you and uh, uh, continue to loop you at whatever it is that you're experiencing until it, she loops you right out of uh, uh, your, you know, it's like if you don't have that vertical uh, uh, emphasis of the father to make your exodus in other words if it's not a, a toroidal vortexual energy that speeds up the, the spiraling effect of the mother speeds up until it finally makes its point or its exodus and at the highest rate of spin and, uh, but with the, the, the initiative or the incentive of the, of the vertical energy of the, of the, the exodus, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, of the father, the rising up of the, the vertical, uh, transmission of consciousness out of, you know, so you're taking all of your your DNA consciousness of. I listened to a guy the other day that said, DNA one gram of DNA is tetra tetra tetra. You know, it's like it's enough information to create an entire galaxy. In uh, you know, in your DNA. Dan Winter goes on to say that it's the most valuable thing in the universe. Is is DNA because of its incredible capacity for information, to store information. So somehow, some way, we're taking our consciousness from our DNA uh, through a plasma uh, transmission. And so you gotta refer back to Dan Winter's most recent video uh, and he's just started making some more videos. And so I'm really happy to see him uh, doing more videos. And this last one, this is 11, 11, 22. So the most recent one from this date uh, is the one I'm talking about. And uh, he's talking to him in conversation with a lady. And I can't even remember the name of the, the video. But so I'm putting all of this together and saying, look, you, you loop your plasma. First, you purify, you know, baptize yourself in the distilled water on a continued fast and prepare yourself, purify yourself. And to go into the ultra filtered plasma, your light, and then to l begin to loop that light. And then once you begin to loop that light, then you get a hold of some Amanita muscaria mushrooms. Interesting thing about them is that they're the only legal psychedelic mushroom there is. And it hap winter happens to be, or fall, winter happens to be the season for the mushroom. Santa Claus is famous for his mushrooms and going down the chimney of the Siberian shaman and passing out the, the presents and then hanging among the stockings to let the, the Amanita further dry to ensure its psychedelic effect and, and uh, dispel the, uh, the, uh, the, acid, uh, the acid effect. And of course the shaman would, would drink the, the, the ultra filtered plasma of the reindeer because it had already been the, um, uh, what's the name of that acid that's in that mushroom has already been processed out so they could drink the reindeer pee and be unaffected by any uh, any of the negative uh, and of course they they were probably not you know super clean in terms of their diet and their 
purity per se. I mean, they're eating meat and I don't know. I don't know how to, you know, they're cooking their meat and stuff like that. I don't know what the shaman were eating unless it was just, you know, raw living meat and, uh, you know, frozen meat or something and uh, pine cones or acorns or, you know, I don't know what there is to eat up there in, in Siberia. So I don't know, but, uh, so we're putting all this together and we're thinking, okay, we're, we're going to, we're going to go back through the dark room meditation. Okay. And we're going to purify ourselves before we do that so that we don't burn our, our, our kundalini house down and blow our nervous system completely out. And once we purify in the water, like John did Christ, then we can go into the ultra-filtered plasma and begin to loop the plasma and maybe even consider looping aged. So if we saved our water, for example, if we went into a darkroom meditation uh, with only a jug and we separated out our water and allowed our waters to uh, <clears throat> maybe to just keep looping our water and on the third day you know it's like the water becomes the brightest it would almost be like aged urine but uh, maybe it's aging within us. You know, if we continue to loop our, our plasma while we're in the dark. Uh, so go ahead and purify it in the, in the sun. Structure our distilled water in the sun. Go ahead and purify. Poop out all the inorganic matter and begin to dream again and at some point be prepared to go into a dark room meditation and maybe to stay for you know i'm 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 thinking three or four days i'm not thinking 40 days like a lot of these guys are talking about but they're not doing what we're talking about here so these are possibilities these are things that i'd really like to consider um, and at some point, uh, okay, so let me tell you a little bit more about, uh, I mean, the end of my darkroom uh, meditation experience, uh, three or four days in there, uh, four or five masters came to me and telepathied me that do not worship them, they're just like uh, you're just like we are you're just not you're just not us and it was like in total conviction that I wasn't to worship anybody or anything so much so that I smashed anything remotely idolic the next morning and then opened the storage unit door and the first thing I saw was the pleroma I saw 360 degrees of waves in the sky alternating light dark silver waves 360 degrees up behind me above me all around me nothing but waves and I, I couldn't even register what that could possibly mean what I think it means is that that's the pleroma that's the that's the net that's the um, and that's what we have to make our exodus undetected through and that that's one of the reasons that we have to make this experience this toroidal plasma transmission because <clears throat> and do it undetected and the Jews the Essenes and the Dead Sea Scrolls said the same thing that we must make our exodus undetected and ironically the Military say that 
the only antenna that's undetectable is a plasma antenna. And I mean, I'm no technician. I don't know what kind of, what the difference between a biological plasma antenna and, you know, their technological antenna is. I don't know. But I mean, things fit, you know, in ways that. Another thing is if you want to look at the toroidal nature of a mushroom and the possibility that as a mushroom ages, it essentially turns inside out by by folding all the way up and becoming like, you know, a dish antenna. And that, that top of the shaft of the mushroom is essentially invisible, but nevertheless there, so that it reverses and turns itself inside out as it ages, as it matures into its final you know, and uh, why would why would a, a scholar, you know, working for the Vatican, come out with a book that says that this mushroom is Jesus Christ? I mean, why would he do that? You have to ask yourself. One of five scholars asked to interpret the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, I and mean, why is this mushroom legal? A you know, highly psychedelic mushroom. Every time I've tripped on this mushroom, it's been a cyclical, uh, toroidal kind of vortexual. Uh, the first time I tripped on this mushroom, I was holding on to a Dickie's work jacket in a cellar, and uh, and that jacket morphed into another jacket, and in another jacket, and another jacket. All the way, all the children's jackets, every jacket ever made, you know, through the wo great woolen warring jackets, all the way to the end where I realized at the very end of this, this repetitive understanding that it was like all of man's, the futility of all of man's efforts in form. And then I came out of the trip. I was like, wow, man, what was that all about? Another time I accidentally started tripping in the bathroom and I, and I broke a glass and I sat there and tried to put that glass together for five hours. You know, it's like, what? What? So, I mean, be prepared for the mushrooms repetitive nature. And then we'll go a little bit farther and realize that the repetitive nature of form. And I'm, I'm just thinking about all of the music that I've listened to through the radio stations. And I get on these songs, right? I'm walking down the highway, walking 10 miles, you know. And I got this song in my head. And I keep singing the same lyric to this song over and over and over and over and I'm thinking man this has got to be demonic here comes a train again there's one one horn okay here we go ready two horns three horns four horns the third horn was just a little beep every time it's four horns every time on these trains Wonder why? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Fourth state of consciousness. Jesus said, blessed is the person who finds himself in the fourth place in heaven. Um, plasma is called the fourth state of matter. Um, four points on the cross, four points on the compass. Um, on and on and on. Anyway, hang on. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of the conversation, and I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking, here comes a train again, four horns. What you're thinking is there's no way that you're going to quit your habitual habits. You know, like these things. Like the sugar donuts I got in my backpack. 
like uh, the meats, the sweet meats. You know, my grandfather, one of my grandfathers was a butcher, you know, and he did meats. And another grandfather was a candy salesman and president of Dell Tex Candy Company out of San Angelo, Texas, selling candy. Okay, sweets and candy, sweets and meats. Okay, these are in my karmic heritage, lineage. How am I going to get rid of that? And the cigarettes. Parents, both my parents smoked cigarettes when I was conceived. How am I going to overcome that? Well, the easiest possible way. The father makes it easy. The mother makes it hard. Dark room meditation. You go into a dark room meditation and you purify as much as you can. You go through the distilled water process. The distilled water purifies your body, okay? Even continue to smoke, you know, continue to, if, if whatever your worst habit is, you know. I mean, if you continue to do it even till the, the, till the minute that you go into the, the dark room meditation, just be... Um, absolutely convinced that you're going to go to sleep and that whatever you know it's like don't go in there and there's no cigarettes in there you're going to sleep man you're just going to sleep so you get a headache whatever you do drink some water you lay back down you sleep you're not going to get a headache if you purify your body successfully enough in other words clarify purify john baptized in the water so that you don't burn up you know through your it's like if you go to sleep what happens is you you start burning clean uh, the things that are in you you know so if you've got all these toxins in you then you're going to go through this detox okay and you maybe headache aches whatever it is right it's like whatever however long it takes to I'm not saying that three or four days is necessarily sufficient and it depends on your toxicity level you know everybody's different and then how how clean can you get before you you go in there purifying with the water from the father the rain water the pure water the the oxygen and the hydrogen that's rocket fuels there are only two molecules in distilled water Make sure it's structured, structured in the sun. Dan Winter talks about structured water. It's really important. I believe it. You know, it's just like just structure to where it's it's suitable. It's not just a purified. You could probably use purified, really pure water. If it's zero to ten parts per million, it's considered distilled water. So if that's all you can find, then that's fine. I found some water that was purified water and they said it was the equivalent of distilled water or for uses that that distilled water has but whether it's structured or not is the question the structured i think has something to do with its ability to purify you so we do this purification before we go into the dark room and then once we get in there then we can use our water and hopefully it tastes like honey water. And so we're looping our water. And so just try looping our water for three days, folks, and see, see if it doesn't concentrate within us and brighten us and brighten us and brighten us. And then, uh, you know, take the mushroom on the third day. And on the third day, he rose. You know, and... and uh, So that's the, that's the idea, okay? So if that's the case, I'm going the wrong direction because I'm headed south. Mushrooms are in the north, folks, but you can get them sent to you. Call me crazy. Just don't call me late for, uh, you know, rainwater. All right, 3434, I looked at the clock. It's like 7-7. Seven, seven. It's God, God. God is one, one. 34, whatever. What a trip. Pause.
Okay, so the final question is, well, what have I got to lose, right? Or what have I got to gain? But what have I got to lose is, how about this? How about 300 million frequencies per second penetrating a plasma wall of the human cell into the DNA with a two-way RF signal, cooking my DNA. My RF meter acts the same in front of a microwave oven that it does my cell phone. Okay? So what I got to lose is my DNA. What I got to lose is my consciousness, is my, my universal consciousness that's capable of of retaining enough information to create an entire galaxy being altered, you know, by a microwave oven. That's what I got to lose. What have I got to gain? You know, you name it, folks. You name it. So, I mean, I don't even know what the title of this video uh, mushroom, I dare you, you know, I dare you mushroom. I'll think of something. So, in the meantime, I was still thinking, do 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 Not really. Okay. One little quick view of Spiritual Chuck. Yes, this is me. I'm not too crazy. I'm still alive. I had one little episode since I've been using my uh, shielding where my left eye now has tracers in it. Like, if I move my my eye up and down like that I get some kind of light in the top and the bottom of my eye it's like what was that what is that and it's been doing it for ever since I, I, I wore the I wore the shielding so I don't know man my left eye is a little bit sore from from that I don't know what caused that anybody has any ideas please give me a comment and uh, <clears throat> that's it guys I walked around the night till about 11 o'clock and and I felt pretty peaceful like like uh, you know I wasn't afraid of anything I saw lights on in people's houses and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, man, life's still going on, even though it's the middle of the night. And uh, so no fear. Don't be afraid of the dark, folks. Because you're the light. That's why you don't want to fear the dark. All right, peace, love, and light. <laughs>